SFUSD. That's the place to be. SFUSD. Bienvenidos at the Juan Ying. SFUSD. Everyone come and see. SFUSD. Join our family. Wonderful scientists! I'm so happy to see all of you again. How was your break? What did you do? Oh, wow, what an exciting time. Did any of you learn anything new? Oh, I love to hear about people learning. How many of you were able to play with your shadow puppets? Ooh, quite a few. It also sounds like many of you were able to modify your theaters too. That makes me so happy. I love knowing when my students are learning. You know, that sort of reminds me about what I want to investigate with all of you this week. Would you like to hear about it? All right, that's so great. It seems like all of you still love learning as much as I do. Well, we were told last month that our schools would reopen. Did you know about that? It's <sighs> so exciting. And in, in anticipation of schools reopening, every teacher has either done or will soon complete an important COVID-19 training. I did mine and it took a really long time, but some things really stuck out to me. I was learning that students should wear face masks at all times, unless they're eating or drinking water, and we can't mix up classes like before. And one really interesting point that stuck out to me was that we have to take our own and students' temperatures before school starts, but we can't measure a person's temperature after they've been standing in the sun. Isn't that interesting, scientists? So I was left wondering, well, why can't we measure a person's temperature after they've been on the sun? Why does the sun affect our temperature? So I want us to figure this out together. What do you think? Can my scientists handle a new investigation? Of course you can. <laughs> I wanted to check just in case, though. But knowing that, let me tell you what I'd like to do today. I would like for us to write our question, learn some new words, and to think about our topic, the thing we're studying. Do you have your notebook ready so that we can write in it? That's okay. Go get your notebook and a pencil while I make sure I'm ready. Okay, I need something to write with. My question, I have my notebook. Okay, great. Well, scientists, I think I'm all set. Let's write today's date, April 5th, the page number, and our question, why can't we measure a person's temperature after being in the sun? Let's get to it. So I'll leave my question here so you can start copying, scientists. Today is April 5th, 2021. And this is page 31 for me. Wow. All right, so why can't we measure a person's temperature after being in the sun? All right. Do you have everything written down? Great, but if not, you can take some time later to finish it up. Remember, all of these lessons are on our YouTube channel, so you can watch them again and again and again. <laughs> Anyways, I would like for us to go over some words that I've been mentioning because I wanna make sure that all of my scientists understand them. One word that I mentioned was temperature. Do you know what that word means? Wow, some of you do. If you didn't know, temperature means how hot or how cold something is. For instance, if I'm eating soup and it's really hot, it has a high temperature. Now, if I get a glass of water and add a lot of ice to it, it'll feel cold, which means it has a cooler temperature. You know, scientists, I was thinking, we're talking about sunlight and temperature, but now it makes me wonder something else. When is it warmest outside? Why don't we think about different times we're outside and how warm we think it is? Oops, too confusing. Uh, let me explain it better. Let's think about different things outside, like rain, clouds, fog, and remember if those days are hot, cold, or in the middle, neither hot nor cold. Those types of things are called weather. So let's think about different weather conditions and the temperature we feel with each one. I would like for us to think about how the temperature feels in San Francisco when it rains, is foggy, is cloudy, 
and fully sunny. I have some symbols that represent these weather condi conditions, so let me put them up. So I had rainy with a rain cloud, foggy, cloudy, and sunny. So scientists, when it's rainy outside, how does the temperature feel? Cold, so-so, or warm? Agreed. It feels pretty cold outside when it rains. So I'm going to pop this cold symbol. How about when it's foggy? How does the temperature feel here in San Francisco? You're right. It still feels pretty cold when it's foggy. Put that. How about a cloudy day with a little bit of sunlight? Mmm, good thinking scientists. That is a so-so day when it comes to temperature. So we're gonna put the hot and cold. But how about a sunny day? I agree, it gets really warm on a sunny day in the city. I just carry my sweater around on those days. All right. Wow, we scientists, look at all the work we did. I really hope we can use our knowledge of the weather and temperature to help us determine why we shouldn't measure our temperature after being out in the sun. I can't wait to explore this tomorrow. Please enjoy the rest of the show and I'll see you then. Hey friends, guess who? It's Mr. Peter, and I am here in one of my favorite places in San Francisco, Dolores Park. I come running here often, and I thought this might be a good place to start today's video. Well, hello, everybody. It's Mr. Peter again, and today we are talking about a subject that all of us can relate to, science. More specifically, the weather. But before we get started, there are a few things I should explain. For one, Temperature. What does the word temperature mean? Temperature is how hot or cold something is. Here in the United States of America, we use the Fahrenheit scale to measure temperature. For example, a comfortable room temperature for humans is about 70 degrees. Our body temperatures, like when they take our temperature, that's about 98 degrees. Water, when it gets to 32 degrees, will freeze. Or, when it gets to 212 degrees, it will boil. Be careful. Boiling water can burn you if it splashes. Another word that is important when we are talking about weather is climate. Climate is the weather condition in a place over time. Some places can get really hot in the summer, but then really super cold in the winter time. In San Francisco, it's colder in winter, but it hardly ever snows. Here in the Bay Area, the weather changes depending on where you are. Did you ever notice that it might be foggy and cooler where you are, and then you go to a different part of town and it's sunny and warm? Have you ever traveled outside the city over the Golden Gate Bridge or the Bay Bridge? Did the weather change? Did it change as you got farther away? Maybe you are near the water. Maybe you are on a hill. Maybe you are in a valley. Maybe you are downtown where there are a lot of buildings. San Francisco has a lot of hills and a lot of buildings. All of these factors play a part in the weather, depending on where you are. What makes the weather? What changes the weather? Let's talk about the weather. The sun and air and water. That's what makes the weather. Moving air is called the wind. The wind moves things around. Clouds can cover up the sun. Changes the weather, the sun and air and water. That's what makes the weather. Fog a 
is a cloud close to the ground. Have you ever walked through one? Rain and snow fall from the clouds. They make the weather feel wet and cold. Let's talk about the weather. The sun and air and water. Can you predict the weather? How cold is it in the refrigerator? How about the freezer? How hot is a burning fire? How hot is it in the desert? Does it make a difference if it's morning or afternoon? Oh, there's so many questions. Enjoy the rest of the show and see you next time. Good morning. It's time for Mondays with Matthews. And today we're going to be reading an excellent book. It is called, can you see it there? It is called A Butterfly is Patient. And this book is by Diana Hutz Aston and Sylvia Long. And we want to thank Chronicle Books for sharing with us this morning. A Butterfly is Patient. A Butterfly is Patient. It begins as an egg beneath an umbrella of leaves, protected from rain hidden from creatures that might harm it until the caterpillar inside chews free from its egg case, tiny, wingless, hungry to grow. I'm peeking around the book to make sure you can see it. A butterfly is creative. A caterpillar feeds on leaves, eating so much that it must molt or shed its skin many times it can grow up to 30,000 times larger than it was when it took its first bite. Wow, that's a lot of growth. Once a caterpillar has eaten all that it needs, it creates a protective covering called a chrysalis. I hope I'm saying that right. Chrysalis. Curled inside the chrysalis is its growing wings. Now it's time for metamorphosis, changing from one form to another. Metamorphous, metamorphous, changing from one thing to another. A butterfly is helpful. Butterflies, like bees, help pollinate plants so that they can reproduce or make seeds. As a butterfly flits from flower to flower, sipping nectar, tiny grains of pollen cling to its body, then fall away onto flowers. Seeds are only produced when pollen is transferred between flowers of the same species. This is called pollination. A butterfly is protective. Butterflies use their wings to protect themselves from predators such as hungry lizards and other insects. Some butterflies have markings on their wings called eye spots. Scientists don't know what they are used for perhaps to scare away predators or attract mates. Wings can help butterflies camouflage or hide themselves in the environment. One kind of butterfly, the peacock butterfly, makes a hissing sound by rubbing its wings together when it is alarmed. A butterfly is poisonous. The warning colors of some butterflies' wings, yellows, reds, oranges, orange, whites, and blacks, tell predators that they are poisonous or bad tasting. Monarchs and pipe vine swallowtails eat poisonous plants as caterpillars so that they become poisonous as adults. Birds and other insects have learned not to eat them. They know those are poisonous. A butterfly is spectacular. Ooh, look at all the different colors, sizes. Look how beautiful they are. Butterfly is spectacular. A butterfly is thirsty. To find flowers, butterflies smell the air with their antennae. They taste with their feet but sip nectar, the sweet liquid produced by many flowers with a proboscis, a tongue that coils and uncoils. Wow. 
Some butterflies get their nourishment from rotting fruit, blue morpho, or minerals. Often a kaleidoscope of butterflies gathers as a puddle club in mud near a pond or a lake to drink water rich in salts and minerals. A butterfly is big. The rare Queen Alexandra birdwing is the largest butterfly in the world with wings that can span up to one foot. <gasps> it lives in a rainforest in northern Papua New Guinea or tiny. The tiniest is a rarely seen Aryan small blue found in Afghanistan with a wingspan of less than one third of an inch about the length of a grain of rice. That is small. A butterfly is scaly. A rainbow of shiny, powdery scales covers the wings of a butterfly. Scales stacked like shingles on a roof. Without scales, its wings would be as transparent as the wings of a bee or a dragonfly. Wow. The colors, patterns, and shapes of a butterfly's wings have a purpose. Some use their pattern of colors to attract mates in places where the climate is cool, dark. Scales absorb heat from the sun, warming the butterfly's flight muscles. Butterflies are cold-blooded and must have a body temperature of 86 degrees Fahrenheit, 36, 30 degrees Celsius, to, in order to be able to fly. A butterfly is not a moth. Butterflies and moths belong to the same family of insects, the Lepidoptera, which means scale wing. They are the only insects with scaly wings, but there are differences between them. Moths appeared on Earth between 100 and 190 million years ago. Butterflies, 40 million years ago, during the Cretaceous period when the flowering plants and the nectar most butterflies need to survive evolved. Nearly every kind of butterfly flies during the day while moths fly at night. A moth spins a cocoon made of silk while a butterfly wraps itself in a chrysalis or exoskeleton made from its skin. A lot of big words there. <laughs> A butterfly is a traveler. Most butterflies, such as the red admiral or the common buckeye, migrate a short distance to find a warmer place. But some, like the monarch, travel far. Although monarchs weigh only as much as a few rose petals, they can fly almost 3,000 miles from Canada to their winter home in Mexico at a rate of 20 miles per hour. Glider pilots have reported seeing monarchs flying at an altitude of 11,000 feet, higher than some clouds. Wow. They go far and high, from Canada all the way to Mexico. Wow. A monarch is magical. Monarchs gather in huge numbers in the forests of central Mexico, waiting for spring. Then they fly north to the milkweed plants in North America, where they, where they lay their eggs. Now it's time again for their metamorphosis. Time to change again. A butterfly is patient. The egg hatches. The caterpillar emerges, uh, feasting on leaves before it wraps itself into its warm, protective chrysalis, patiently waiting. So it started all over again. A butterfly is patient. A butterfly is patient to soar. And then look at all the different kinds of butterflies. Thank you, Diana, Hutz, Aston, Sylvia Long, and Chronicle Books for sharing with us, A Butterfly is Patient. 
What a great book. See if you'll see a butterfly today when you go outside. And you can think to yourself, a butterfly is patient. Have a great day. Everybody. Welcome to Access at Home. My name is DeMarco and I'm a dancer with Access Dance Company. Today I want to show you guys how isolations can lead to waving or flexing, which is a term where movement commonly find in hip hop genre. So let's do it. So what that looks like is using our upper right limb, you're gonna Break your wrist or let it become loosed or numb or dead, whatever you would like to. <laughs> and then you want to do the same thing with your elbow. Yeah, so you want to present it and then let it become loose. Present it, let it become loose. Then you want to find that in your shoulder, lift it up. Let it become loose, let it become asleep. Lift, let it fall asleep. Do that with your upper chest as well. Rise, and then let it just be, come to a rest. Sit again, rise, come to a rest. And then you will continue through to the other limb. And then release. Now, what that looks like as you amp up the speed, that's how you get the visual of this yeah and to get there you would find present your fingertips let it release find a break in the wrist present your elbow let it release present your shoulder let it release present your chest let it release and then you would just do them one at a time in an isolation kind of format and continue to speed it up or continue to amp up the speed as you get better. So watch. Present, 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 present. Drop. Present, present, present. Yeah. yeah. And if you amp up the speed, it'll become this flowy sensation. So once again, presenting the fingertips, finding a break in our wrist, presenting the elbow. Releasing that, presenting that shoulder, releasing it, presenting your chest, release, and then if you want to continue to the other side, present the other shoulder, release, present the elbow, release, present the a broken wrist, and then finish with the fingertips or the end of the left leg. And all together that looks like flow, sensation. In, isol in, in isolation form, that looks like. So I hope you can practice this at home. Hope it's something fun you could do next time you hear your favorite hip hop song or if you're taking hip hop class. You can try this movement or try this, this technique. Till next time, thank you.
Hi, I'm Jack with the Bay Area Discovery Museum. Today we're going to do some creative chemistry and find out whether different materials float or sink. This activity can get a little messy, so make sure we're closed, you don't mind splashing on. Maybe do it outside or in a kitchen sink or in a bathtub, somewhere you've got some room to make a mess. I've got my bucket of water here, that's what I'm going to be testing in. And I've got some different materials that I had lying around. I've got some canola oil, a couple different kinds of soap, and shaving cream. I've also got some food coloring if I want to change the color of the water and some measuring spoons. This is how I'm going to add my liquids into my water. And I've also got a chart to keep track of my observations. A piece of paper and pencil will work just as well as this thing. So let's try it out. I'm going to test out this dish soap. And I am going to predict that this is going to float in the water. I'm going to write it down. And try it out. Let's see, let's measure out one a great thing for little ones to do. It's a great way to practice your motor skills and to get some basic math practice in. Squeeze it in. Let's see what happens. Whoa, that is not floating at all. See that? It's sinking all the way to the bottom. All right, dish soap sinks. Try it out on your own with all kinds of different materials. Let us know what happens. Thanks so much for watching and have fun. Bye. Hello, I'm Superintendent Dr. Vincent Matthews of the San Francisco Unified School District. It made me so happy to spend time with you today. I hope you had fun too. What did you make on the show today? Submit your content here using the QR code or go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, backslash S-F-U-S-D, yes, Y-E-S. And watch all of our episodes at sfusd.edu backslash SF loves learning. And now it's time to say goodbye. So let's sing our goodbye song. For this song, you have to use your whole body. Will you sing it with me? Are you ready? Wave high, wave low, for now it's time to go. Wave your elbows, wave your toes, wave your tongue and wave your nose. Wave your knees, wave your lips, blow a kiss with your fingertips. Wave your ears, wave your hair, wave your belly and wave your derriere. Wave your chin, wave your eye, for now it's time to say goodbye. Bye-bye. SFUSD, that's the place to be. SFUSD, bienvenidos at the Juan Ying. SFUSD, everyone come and see. SFUSD, join our family.